I'm Charlie, nice to meet you. Uh, I am currently an artist uh, and I paint. I do big, large scale mural paintings and small uh, um, 3D relief paintings. Um, but I didn't go to university to study art, I actually studied graphic design at Chelsea. Um, I never thought that I would be in the position I'm in now uh, when I started and I've been on quite a journey to get where I am. I always knew that I wanted to be do something for myself, but I never knew how to quite get there. Um, so I wanted to start by talking about do students actually go to university to be employed? Um, for me, when I applied to do my course, I wasn't in the mindset of thinking that I would ever actually work for someone. I didn't know really what my intentions were, but I found that on my course, a lot of people were in a similar mindset, that they either didn't know what they wanted to do or even what was available to them. Um, and I, the main thing for me was when I started my course, I, I really wanted to go and do graphics because I wanted to develop uh, a style and a portfolio that I could then use and go out into the world with in the same way that an illustrator would go and study illustration. They were doing it to make that style. Um, and when I actually went to my interview for Chelsea, they said, what do you want to do when you finish university? And I said, well, I want to start my own studio. Because in my head, it was about doing it the things that I wanted to do um, rather than working for someone else. Um, obviously, I quickly learned that that's the wrong way to think um, because you need other people. But um, the idea of working for someone else didn't really dawn on me until I was in my final year. Um, and even before that, actually, when I was in my second year, we had an uh, external guy come in to teach us typography. And he uh, said to us, OK, I want everyone to name to um, design studios in London. And he went round and literally nobody could even name two. Um, <laughs> and I, I would love to do it now and pinpoint people, but I won't embarrass anyone. But obviously, we were very naive. And we didn't really even know what the jobs were for when we finished. We were doing graphics, but we didn't know who to work for or whether you're going to do graphics or set design or architecture or what was even available to you. Um, so when I got into my final year, I realised that I really needed to learn who was out there, what was out there, and use the, the internet to find out everything that, my, what my opportunities were for me. Initially, obviously, I wasn't looking for that certain type of employment, but I soon realised that it is really important that even if you don't want to work for someone else, you're, you need to be aware of what is actually out there. So if you are going to go and do freelance, you still need to know who the agencies are because you are going to have to go and work for them. Uh, we, had, we had to do a project on our course that was about challenging an idea or proposing a problem. So the course that I was actually on was graphic design communication. And it wasn't so much the course that I thought I was going to come up with this style. It was more we were being problem solvers and coming up with concepts and challenging the things that existed and new things. And we were really pushed to come up with those ideas and then learn the skills to how to execute them. Um, so my idea was that uh, at the time, my now wife had just bought an embroidery machine and I was um, learning how to use it. And as I was doing it, I thought, oh, this kind of looks like my scout badges from when I was a kid. And I was like, oh, wouldn't it be really fun to make some graphic design scout badges? And then I was like, no, that's really lame. Why would anyone do that? And, uh, but then I realized, actually, there was a bigger picture that if I could get myself into the studios that I wanted to work for, then I could reward them for the things that they were doing and their accomplishments, and it would get me that connection with the industry. So to begin the project, I sent emails out with my uh, charliospasson at gmail.com, <laughs> which uh, it wasn't doing, uh, it wasn't doing much, much work, actually. So I realized I needed to go further. And I made a badge, these ones just down here, the fancier chat badge. And I sent it to different companies uh, and had a letter like, explaining the project. And I just asked if I could come in to chat to people. And surprisingly, uh, everyone got back to me and welcomed me in because I'd gone through that effort of actually sending them something. So from that, I got to go into different design agencies, ad agencies. Um, it's nice, that creative review. People would welcome me in. And then as soon as I did those first conversations with people, then it snowballed from there. People recommended it to me to their friends that had agencies. And 
what was really useful was that the majority of times it was the directors of the company. And I found that by going in there and being interested in them rather than talking about myself, it helped a lot that they then taught me about themselves. So I didn't show any of my work to anyone. I just asked them about their, their company and how they got to the position they were in and the work they produce and basically got to learn their journeys. Um, and as the project went on, so it was from the last few months of university, so I was going back to each of the companies to um, find out more about them. And the physical outcome was I made two or three badges for each company, and then I made a few uh, uniforms to bring it back to the scout thing. I did like all design skill badges and the individual badges for the companies um, and went with a photographer to shoot them in their studios. And then for the degree show, I put together like a newspaper. The thing that I learned most from the whole project was it was the connections that I had made along the way that were the most valuable thing to me. It wasn't really about the aesthetic of the work, which is what I had initially thought that going to university was about, but it was about meeting those people and making those opportunities for myself. Um, so from the project, I got several internships. So one led on to my first job, and then my second job were at Studio Moros, and I got featured on a lot of blogs, which when you go to university, you think that you're learning these skills so you can go out there and work for someone, but almost getting yourself featured before you graduate is a really useful thing because then employers are already seeing you before you've got to your degree show. And so it's nice that chose me as one of their graduates of 2013, so I got a post on the blog about that, and then they've featured me a few times since, and I'm now good friends with Alex, and he gets me working because of that initial connection. Um, and then it's the same as Creative Review. So I invited him to come to the show before it had opened. Um, and it, this is quite a big thing that at our degree show, I think everyone expected that people would just come and press would be there and employees would be there. But it would, wasn't like that at all. It was, it's your mates come and you have a party, really. So it was really useful that I had invited Patrick to come beforehand and show him around. And he asked if I wanted to have a feature in the September issue. And then that led on to doing the cover for that issue in the similar style to how I'd done the badges. The main thing I learned from it all is that being employable isn't just about the skills or the style that you have learned. It's about you as a person and about how you present yourself and who you present yourself to. Since this all happened and since I graduated, I started working for a company called Harriman Steel. So they were an internship that I did from the project. And at the same time, I started the studio that I wanted to do in the initial stage. But I knew that to be able to run my own studio, I would need to work for other people first to learn all of those things. Obviously, I know you went for it straight away and the uh, big balls were over there. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I didn't feel like I was, um, I had the skills that I needed yet. I'd, I'd never really even used Photoshop or it, like in university, we were coming up with ideas and then going out and doing them. But I knew I really, really needed to learn how to be part of a business and be around people that were doing graphics all day and dealing with money and knowing how much your work is worth because it's not something that you learn at university. Um, so I started Studio Opposite. This was four years ago now. So with a friend of mine, he's very tall and only wears black clothes. So he, we were opposite because he's the big pint of black um, paint and I'm the small one of orange. Um, it's funny if he's standing here next to me, but he's not there. <laughs> um, and we were taking on freelance work. He, he's a more traditional graphic designer. I was more playing around with fun colors and things, as I still have now. And um, we were doing that evenings and weekends and earning extra money through doing it. And both of our um, bosses at the time knew we were doing it and supported us, which was really good, because without that, obviously, it would have been quite a strain to be trying to hide it from everyone. Um, and as you experienced, we were in our bedroom as well. So when we had meetings, we had to do it outside of working hours, which was a bit weird, because we needed to meet on an evening. And, so it's a, it's a tricky one, but we balanced it. Um, and then, so I worked at Harriman Steel for a year. And then after that, I went on to working for Studio Moros uh, with Kate, which I did for the next three years. And because she's quite a small team, or was at the time, I learned the most important things about running a business. The, the structure that we had at Moros was that everyone was on quite a level playing field. There were no 
juniors to middleweights to senior, everyone had their own skills that they brought to the table and then you all managed your own products. So for me, I learned how to be a project manager, how to take clients out and deal with the real situations that you have to deal with if you're running a studio and then cost everything up as well. So you learned everything quite quickly. Um, but at the same time, I was always painting and making my own things. So as much as I loved doing logos, who doesn't? I, uh, I love doing other things as well. Um, and I was making my own paintings and through someone that I met on the badge project, uh, the, they worked at BBH, the ad agency at the time, and they invited me to come in to paint a mural, which was my first one um, nearly two years ago. Uh, and that got uh, pressed because it was for charity and it got auctioned. And then since then, I got more work in and eventually left my job in February this year to concentrate on just being a painter. So this is where I'm at now. I do abstract geometric circles and squares. Um, that's pretty much, yeah, my, uh, my vibe. <laughs> um, I did my style that I went to university to go to, to do. Um, and, uh, but I never thought I could get to that position. I followed the traditional route that your parents tell you to do of go to university, go and get a job, and sort of do it the normal way. But you don't have to do it that way, there are other ways of getting into the fields, but it's not that important about knowing what you want to do. The main thing that I learned from the experience was it's not about the skills, yes, it's about you as a person. Um, so I would really encourage everyone to go and pursue those interactions. They're the thing of going to these events, talking to the people afterwards, getting in contact with people. As you were saying earlier about Instagram, you can find most people that work in a creative field on Instagram or on LinkedIn because most people want to show what they're doing on Instagram and most people go and have LinkedIn to, I'm not really sure yet, to show where they work for some reason. <laughs> but if you type in on LinkedIn a company's name, you will usually find everyone that is working for that company in their job role within the company. And you can message them directly on that or you can take their name and put it in Instagram and find them as a person. The important thing is how you approach that interaction. So obviously I sent these badges and that's the difficult thing in itself of how you approach these people. But from when I was at Kate, the biggest thing that I found is sending people things is a really good thing. She would get so many things through the post from drawings to random bits of food to anything. And the biggest impact it has was that everyone in the studio would come around to see what she had received because they wanted to see what it was, and then they would go and see how the person's work afterwards. So compared to if you just send an email with a PDF, the studio manager will see it, he'll get the email, and then she might just, she or he, sorry, might just send it to the boss, and no one else has really seen it. So if you can find that thing that is really useful, and will make that impact, then it can have a really good advantage on you. So my example of make an impression is just one of many that I knew when I was at university um, of how people could get the foot in the door. Um, and as I said, sending an email isn't really good enough anymore. And if you, just, if you do your research, there are lots of ways to go about it. So if you see that the director of a company is always posting a picture of their dog on Instagram and their favorite cakes, send them a dog-shaped cake. I mean, not, not as crap as this one, but it's about making that impact. If you receive this cake in the post and it says, can I come in for a chat or here's my work, you're more likely to get a response. Or even if you don't send any of your work, uh, which the way that I went about it and I s just sent things and said, can I come in for a chat, you're a lot more likely to be accepted in because they've seen the effort that you've gone through. It's just about how you approach this opportunity. And then obviously once you're in there, it's not all about your work. That's the biggest thing that I would say. It's about you. You are, you are selling your work, but you're also selling you as a person. As an employer, they're looking for someone to join their team. And as your team, you're seven people. If you're employing someone, that's going to affect the whole daily basis of the whole team. If, you're, if you go into your interview or the interaction that you've managed to get hold of and you're miserable, it's, even if your work is amazing, nobody wants to employ someone that's going to be miserable all day. So it's really about selling you as a person and what you stand for. 
alongside your work. And uh, that's me.